Okay, so I'm joined now by Sue von Copenhagen. Is it Copenhagen or Copenhagen? Whatever. <laughs> it's, a, it's like the city Copenhagen, but it has two P's. Yeah, that's what threw me so off. It's all Dutch kind of um, spelling of it. <laughs> okay. Well, Van, Van Copenhagen, I'd say. Yeah, um, so, Sue, you're an artist, and where are you based? I'm in East Cork in Ladies Bridge. Oh, yeah, right. I have a studio down here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you're, you specialize in watercolors and. Yeah, I paint in watercolors. Um, but then I've got sort of not only paintings, but I've got peripherals from that. I've got prints, I've got cards, I've got calendars. So oh. there's, you know, a whole range of stuff from starting from about 10 euro up to whatever. Okay, but um, so how long have you been doing like art as your as your main profession? As my main thing. Look, I was working part time in a gallery up until um, 2015, so I've been full time in my studio since then. Okay. But prior okay. to that, I have been running art classes and having exhibitions. But so it's been your, it's been your whole went life. into full time um, just you know, like five years ago. Yeah. Right, but uh, but it sounds like it's been basically it's been your life. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that was the reason really that I had to step back from working out, you know, it, 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 it more formally because I just needed time to be at home painting. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, I suppose a couple of questions which have always interested me. The, the artwork, the, the actual paintings, I suppose, are, you know, that's where everything else comes from and all of that. But how do you go about selling those how do they how does that work do you sell them online do you do you well this is the thing you know normally it's exhibitions you know i'm a member of the watercolor society of ireland so that would be one annual exhibition uh which is normally um you know in a gallery in dublin it used to be in john Geary, then it moved to phoenix park um you know the cowshed gallery so you you know you'd be in with a group of artists there okay. then there'd be other group exhibitions like um Bloom, which has a floral and botanical art exhibition. I would have been exhibiting um, in London with the um, Society of Botanical Artists a few times, but my main one is Art Source, the art fair in Dublin, which would have been this last weekend. And that, you know, I spent most of the year building towards that, building up stock, as it were, you know, painting away so that when I go up to Dublin for that three or four day event, I've got about 50 original framed paintings. And on frame paintings and in the prints, cards, and calendars, etc. So that is my main event of the year. Right. And you know, and I had other ones, and I normally do a solo show in the second year. So those are my selling opportunities. And you know, this year each one has just fallen away, fallen away. And you know, you'd hope that they to proceed. And some of them have gone online and some haven't. Um, so now I'm just really hoping that um, you know, I've just had my website shop. Kind of revamped so that all the sort of smaller items are all on there and you know okay. it's taken by so you know it's a question of you know pushing towards that hoping people will discover it and uh, maybe do a bit of free press christmas shopping right and do you think that they can buy your the actual original paintings plus the prints plus the calendars yeah. everything's available there yeah, 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 yeah. What I've put on the website is the, you know, anything below 200 euros, say, that is just in the, you know, click and buy. Okay. Whereas the larger paintings, I don't list prices or anything. You know, I'd rather have a bit of um, dialogue with the person, a bit of engagement, because, you know, it's not as though you're just making a thing. You've invested a lot of yourself in creating this. Yeah, and um, you know, you, it's it's so nice going to an art fair where you really get to meet the person who has gone. Oh wow, I'd love to hang that on my wall. Wouldn't that make a nice thing? And you get that connection. Yeah. So I would hate to see my bigger paintings, in which I've invested a lot of my time and a lot of my soul. I would hate to see them just kind of, you know, I get an email saying yeah. ship it there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that that was one question. That's the other thing that that was really intriguing me is what it feels like to actually sell the painting be like is it a vindication that yes i've sold it everyone else appreciates what i've done or is it very bittersweet because it's got they can be really mixed feelings they really can um you know some you're only too delighted and you go oh that's another one in the bank as it were you know and you sort of you can set yourself a financial target or something okay. you know some of them you can let go more easily but others i know i once sold a painting and the minute the guy paid for it i went what have you done and i just 
because it was something that had great sentimental value for me as well. And then I don't know what happened, but in a five five minutes later, he said to me, "I really don't want to be difficult, but." Would you mind if I changed my mind and took that one? I said, you can have it at the same price. <laughs> and what happened to that painting afterwards? So do you still have it or? I have it and my daughter has insisted I hang it on a wall in an upstairs bedroom so that nobody can see it. And I've got prints of it, so it's fine. Okay. Um, and I've got a couple. I was actually given advice by a lady in her 90s once who had been an artist. And she said, the piece of advice I need to give you is do not sell all your best work. And you're not only keeping it for your children, you're keeping it for yourself. Okay. And I have stuck by that. There are about four pieces that I will not sell because, you know, they give me pleasure to walk past and go, gosh, I did that and I don't think I could do that again. And, you know, it sort of gives you yeah. a bit of a thrill when you see that. But otherwise, you know, there are others where um, you don't feel as attached so you can let them go quite easily really yeah, okay. yeah but then it's, it's very often mixed feelings you know yeah, that's what have told it, delighted that somebody wanted it enough uh but at the same time sad that it's gone yeah yeah i can understand that that, that was always something i was wondering because i'm i don't have any artistic talent really but then yeah like i can see how you'd be invested in it but yeah, yeah, then, then, yeah. and i mean having an exhibition you know a solo exhibition you are putting yourself out there on the walls for public scrutiny yeah which is quite nerve-wracking yeah and so tell me the prints then i know yeah. you're, you're doing limited edition prints yeah. is that right yes. so you yes. pick yes. particular pieces and only produce a hundred or something of those not even um i have a maximum okay i've got some smaller prints where I would take it beyond, but the larger prints, I have no more than 25 ever um, oh. printed of those. Because, you know, um, people do like to feel that, you know, they're not, it's not like prints that have been bought in a furniture shop where, yeah. you know, your friend has one too, that kind of thing. And they're high so they quality. Are, what's the they're very high quality. They um, GK prints. So I have them done either by the Copper House Gallery in Dublin or by um, a printer in um, Bristol. Um, so they either photograph or scan at very high resolution and then it's printed onto archival paper okay. um, with inks that don't fade. So they, they say that these prints will last 80 years. And you know what I say to people is, if you have a problem in 80 years, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you also use the... Um the same pictures and for your calendars and cards. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I have two kinds of calendars. I have the perpetual calendar, which is like a birthday calendar. Um, you know, people have a little diary sometimes where yeah. they record the birthdays, but you forget to go and look at whereas if you've got a calendar hanging in your kitchen, you've only got to remember to turn the page and you know you glance up and oh gosh, yes, next yeah. week I need you know need to act on that one. And then I do a desk calendar every year, and mostly I try to incorporate on that one 12 images from this year's paintings. Okay, okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, I hope people yeah. go and check them out. Um, yeah. yeah the, other, the other thing, just while we're still on everything you do, is um, yeah. I noticed you, you do Zoom. You're now doing art classes by Zoom. I am. You know, I've always had small classes here in my studio, um, partly small because of the limitations of space and it is nice to have a group of sort of up to seven people you get build up a good group dynamic but that had to fall away in march because at first before restrictions were brought in i started to have some reservations about sufficient physical distancing and people not feeling confident and comfortable so i actually terminated before we legally had to um, and we sort of drifted over the summer and then eventually i realized we're not going to reassemble in real life anytime soon. No. Um, and I simply had to, you know, figure out how to do this. You know, when you're doing Zoom, you know, and we're having a chat, that's nice and easy. But when you've got multiple um, filming angles, you know, you're trying to be able to talk to people and make eye contact. And I do it on gallery view so I can see everybody. And, you know, we get a little bit of chat going and somebody wants to sing a song during the middle of it, that's why. Um, but then I've got to be able to toggle between different camera angles so that they can watch me painting because right. it's a live demonstration. So we've gone on to um, the Zoom platform, which means that I can uh, amalgamate two classes into one because I'm not limited by physical space. 
and it's going really well. Yeah. Um, and what I do with that, obviously I do a recording which gets sent out to them as well. Um, but I've also been making little YouTube clips just in case there's a glitch with my recording on the day. Yeah. So I have done a preparation painting which has all been filmed and then I put it up onto a YouTube channel which has restricted access. And then the people in my classes um, can view that for a different um, example of what we did in the class. And it's broken up into little short clips. I haven't spliced them together, partly through technical lack of expertise on my part, but partly because it's handy for people to be able to watch three or four minutes and then maybe do that part themselves and then come back and watch a bit more or, you know, go off and do something. So they say they actually like it being broken up into segments. Okay. So it's going well, yeah. That's good because, um, yeah, I've talked to some people and it's, oh, yeah, it's like how much of the changes that we've been forced to go through will remain afterwards and how much will we just be so sick of video that we won't want to go there or I, yeah. I think a lot of what say I think a lot of a lot yeah, of yeah. work for people um yeah. especially I suppose around their own time you're not you know yeah it, it's like people working on their house you know you future proof it you put in yeah. so this is kind of what we're doing um you know we're trying to get with the program now on the assumption that we may need to continue this we may not want to but we've got to be prepared. We can't just lie there and hope that things will go back to the way they were in case they don't. Yeah. So we've just actually got to adapt and um, try and do the best we can with what's going yeah. on. Yeah, I think, I think um, but I, I think a lot of people will still want to do, I, I think there will still be a market for that. Even I think so, you know, particularly with people who might have, um, you know, immune issues, for example, yeah. and may still want to be very careful about who they interact with. And it, those people who've learned that they can cope, particularly through having platforms like Zoom and WhatsApp yeah. video and FaceTime and you know, um, Facebook Live and all of that, realize that actually they can still maintain good connections with people, yeah. Yeah. that they don't feel isolated. And, you know, especially during the winter, you know, driving out to a class on a, an icy road morning yeah. is a lot less appealing than staying in your pajamas, having a cup of coffee and still attending the class. Yeah. No, I, I, so, yeah. Um, so, and, you know, having both options might be the way forward. Yeah, I, I think it will be. I think it's something that people will have to keep as an option. So can people yeah. sign up for those on your website as well? or? Um, I haven't got a sort of click and pay for a class option on yet because I would like to be able to talk to people, just find out, are you a beginner? Should I be setting up a class just for beginners? The group I have at the moment have been with me, most of them for a fair, you know, fair degree of time. But yes, people can contact me you know, via the website and I'll see how the um, numbers grow and I will probably um, put in some extra classes. You know, okay. in, in so the if anybody's watching this, they can contact you directly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Because I mean, as I say, you know, we're not limited by the physical space anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, either people can feed into the group that I have running now or I will be setting up, for, you know, uh, mm -hmm. more groups. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, uh, that's great to talk to you and I hope people will contact you about that because you have some great yeah. work. And just yeah. to remind people, Sue has her booth um, open, but you can get her original artwork, her high quality prints or sign up for her Zoom classes or yeah. Or just, just drop me an email or phone me and let's have a chat. You know, it's, yeah. it's lovely talking to people. Yeah. Well. Okay, well, listen, Sue, thanks a million for talking to us or talking to me, yeah. I suppose, to everybody else who's watching. Sure. And, um, sure. It was great to have you here today. Thanks. Thanks, Brian.